Welcome to section three. We're going to be using some of the performance tools. We're going to be recapping on what we've studied in the strategic chapter and paper. For example, the SWOT analysis, PETS analysis, BCG matrix, Porter's generic strategies, and Porter's five forces models. Now, let's recap on that one by one. Now, if you were to analyze the macro environment that the business is facing related to the actions from the government, which means from the political point of view, and the economic point of view, and the social tastes, and also the technological point of view. So these are something to do with the macro environment. So it means that any of these factors changes, it will certainly affect all the companies in the market. So this is what I mean by the macro environment. Now, to summarize all the first letter, we've got the pest analysis. Now, unlike what we've seen in the strategic uh, papers uh, that we've studied before, but now we are looking at from the advanced performance management papers point of view of how to put them into practice. And therefore, the first political, the KPIs we like to set, firstly, related to the regulatory compliance rating. So it's absolutely important that we uh, adhere to uh, the majority of the regulations uh, in the marketplace. And therefore, we can see that in this country, uh, whether or not our organisation would be adhering to the relevant laws and regulations, including the existing ones and the new ones. So usually this will be done by the internal legal department to rate them for us. Second, we can also assess the political stability index. It's particularly important we can keep an eye on to the stability of the government. So therefore, any particular policies introduced by the governments, for example, in terms of taxation policies, the subsidy and so on, so we can get the latest updates of them. Okay, so keep an eye on to the uh, political stuff or perspective political stability index will be very important there. And, of course, this index, we can check them over on the internet. From the economics point of view, the certain KPIs will include the GDP growth. Okay, so this will be published by the government or directly, uh, indicating that whether or not the uh, economy is good or bad. So usually, before the government, in practice, publishes the actual GDP, it would publish the GDP expected figure ahead of the actual GDP figure. So we are going to be seeing that whether or not the actual GDP will be exceeding our expectation. And if the answer for this is no, of course the economy is not particularly good in that. We can also think about the consumer confidence index. So if consumers are not willing to buy the product or spend the money away, and this means that this will be particularly bad for the economy. Uh, so therefore, leading to deflation in the economy, so for example, prices will fall and everyone will make a loss, and therefore no one is willing to spend uh, the money away. And we will expect later on the government to decrease the interest rates to boost the economy. Now, we can also assess the purchasing power. It's the ability that consumers can spend their money away to buy the product. So if the purchasing power is quite uh, strong, and this means that the sales for the luxury items would be huge and would be good. From a social point of view, we can also monitor, firstly, the demographic shift. It is important that you recognise that whether or not there will be a change in the customer's tastes in the marketplace. So the ways that we can do it, so for example, through surveys or to check the customer databases, whether or not there's been a change in our customer, for example, gender and religions, and so on. So we can monitor the demographic shift okay, within our business. 
We can also look at the social media engagement. So, for example, we can monitor the trends of whether or not our products or services are still popular uh, in the market. We can also look at the diversity index. So, for example, the diversity regarding our workforce, for example, for example, the proportion of males and females, uh, or perhaps diversity with regards to the target market, okay, to see whether or not we can bring, not just for the domestic customers in, but also we are attracting the foreign customers, uh, and particularly in this market or perhaps in our organisation, so you can monitor these. For the technological side, what we can do, Firstly, we can check the R&D that we spend. We can also check the adoption rate of the emerging, emerging technology. Uh, so, for example, through surveys, user registrations, apps downloads, and also sales data related to the latest technology related to the products that we are selling. And also, we can check the patent activity. So, for example, evaluate the number of patents for a technical advancement so that's very important there so if we got lots and lots of patents and, and and this means that yes we are keeping track over the technological side so uh, in other words we are staying in line with the market regarding the technological advancement trend now to analyze whether or not the industry is attractive okay so the attractiveness of the industry. So this means that whether or not, if I were to uh, operate in this industry, whether or not I can make money from it. So we can use another model that you've seen before is the Porter's Five Forces model. Now Porter's Five Forces model details there will be five forces affecting the overall profitability in this industry. Now firstly is the existing competition in the marketplace. Now I would say that if you were to operate in this market, so for example in the mining industry, you, you will need to certainly obtain the license from the government, uh, operating the TV station and, and of course you need to spend the R&D expenditure, marketing expenditure and also obtaining the license from the government. So very, very important. So yes, you can look at, so for example, uh, things like the barriers to entry. If you're a new competitor stepping into this industry, yes, you need to see the barriers to entry. And you also need to see whether or not the competition is quite severe in the existing market. But that's from the strategic point of view or the strategic papers point of view. However, when we come to the performance management level, we will need to set the KPIs to monitor what is going on. So for example, related to a competitive rivalry, we are talking about the existing competitors in the industries. Now if that's the case then, the first KPI, I would say that the market share that I've got okay, in this market so very important. So I would take my own revenue, let's say $10, and to divide into $100 of the total revenue in the market, I would say that the market share would be 10% in there. Okay, so watch out. If that percentage is too high, so usually more than 40%, you may be accused of being a, in a monopoly position in the marketplace. So be careful of that because in most jurisdictions, if more than this figure, usually it will be more than 35%, you may be punished by the relevant laws and regulations set by the government, okay, related to the laws and regulations regarding the monopoly. So making sure that you're ready for that. Now, we will also monitor the annual market growth rate. So what we can say is that, okay, the current market size is $150. However, the previous year's market size was 135. The market itself, in general, has grown by 11.11%, okay? Because we take 150 minus 135 and divide this into 135. So, 
it seems that the market is growing and uh, you can make a decision later on of whether or not to enter into the market or perhaps to leave the market. Now, very, very important ratio from my perspective from practicals point of view is the market concentration ratio. It's a ratio determining whether or not the market itself is dominated by a few players or perhaps you are if you were to enter into this particular market, whether or not it will be a perfect competition that you will face in this market. So what we can say is the market share of the top competitors will simply add them up altogether. So for example, in this market, we've got the company A and B total 60% shares in total. So if that's the case, then 60% there is quite near one but it's not equals to 100% or not equals to 1. So if that's the case, then I would deem that this market uh, would be in a oligopoly market, which means dominated by few uh, key players. So because in different types of market, there would be different types of strategies that we need to adopt. So for example, if you're operating in a market where it's oligopoly, and what you should do is not to lower down your selling price quite easily. Otherwise, the other key players will certainly lower down their selling price in order to keep uh, the competition and keep the market share with you. And if that's the case, then everyone will lose in this market. However, in the monopoly market, on the other hand, it's not very easily for competitors to lower their share price, uh, lower their selling price or to keep the selling price at a high level because they are in the monopoly position. So making sure that firstly analyze the market concentration ratio because if that ratio is quite near to zero, and this means that you are the, you are the, you are the selling price taker, you have to accept the selling price from a market because you are facing perfect competition in this marketplace. Now, according to Porter's five forces, the next one is the buyer, okay, so that could be the internal buyer, which means in a group there will be subsidiaries in a group and buying things from a parent perhaps. Alternatively, more likely there will be external customers or buyers. Now, firstly, we will need to monitor the buyer concentration ratio. So for example, okay, the top buyers divided into the number of total buyers. So for example, the top buyer's uh, revenue will be accounted for $3 million and our business has total revenue of 10 and therefore the top buyer's 30% of our revenue will be concentrated on these top buyers. Now, I would say within a business, if you've got many top buyers, you will see that most likely you will have receivable stays. Uh, it will cost you money, of course, because they are quite top, which means they are quite large customers. And if you are not dealing, uh, if you are not doing business with them, and actually you will fail. And, and, and this is why, uh, if the buyer concentration ratio is quite high, uh, you will certainly face a position that your profit margin may be lower. Okay, as a result, the next KPI is the buyer size distribution you can see that, okay, we've got 450 buyers in total, about 200 of them are quite small, and this means that the buyer size distribution will be about 44.44% of your buyers are small customers. That's absolutely fine there. So you will need to work out how many of your customers are, are relatively small in this particular case. Another KPI is the buyer switching complexity. So this means that from a customer's point of view, if they, if they would like to choose another supplier, they will have to go through the process all over again. So for example, most likely will be the tendering process because you're paying something. Of course, for most companies, they will have to find out three potential suppliers and to benchmark each of these suppliers with regards to their prices, uh, the selling price that they sell the items, and the terms and the quality, and so on and so forth. They will be involving many steps in there. And of course, 
if you are the buyer already, you've bought the software from the supplier company, for example, you would like to change another supplier. So if that's the case, then you will have to change everything. So for example, your customer database and so on. So we'll need to see how complicated it is for the buyer to change the decision to buy from somewhere else. So what we can say is that we can use the total steps in the switching process in the denominator and the number of switching steps required in the numerator. So for example, if I were to change from one supplier to another, I simply go to another supplier and pay for money and that's it, I can finish my changing. And if that's the case then, the complexity, I would say is zero. For example, yes, there'll be many steps in there requiring quotation and so on. Let's say we've got 10 steps in there. However, um, if I were to change that, it's, it, it will be quite easy enough that we pay for it. Okay, we simply pay for it, yeah, job done, and the complexity equals to zero. However, if you were to change to another supplier, there will be many database uh, integration stuff that you have to care about, the IT issues, the maintenance stuff that you have to care about. So for example, within that 10 steps, you will have to change nine steps in there. So I would say the complexity will be relatively high in there. So making sure that you always to uh, keep an eye on to the buyer switching compl complexity and to see whether or not the buyer's bargaining power is high or low. If for the buyers, they found it very complicated to change to another supplier, their bargaining power will be absolutely low there. I can charge a higher price. I would say that this, that this industry is quite attractive uh, as a result. And also for the buyers, you also need to look at the price sensitivity index. So the price sensitivity index simply means we can simply say, okay, if there's a change in price, what will be a change in the quantity demanded? So for example, if you were to reduce your price by 10%, it will boost your demand by 20%. So the price sensitivity index will be two. So this means that customers are quite sensitive to price changes because this index is more than one, for example. Uh, so this would be uh, quite typical in industries like the luxury industries. At the same time, if your company's brand or the product's brand name is not very popular, the price sensitivity index for that particular brand will be more than one is one, okay? So it, it will be very, very difficult for businesses to put up their selling prices. Otherwise, it will decrease the demand a lot more than the uh, increase in selling prices later on. So um, the best way, from my perspective, of course, you will need to create a group of loyal customers within your business and making the price sensitive a sensitivity index less than one. So irrespective of whether or not you're going to be pushing up your prices later on, the demand cannot be sacrificed. How about for suppliers? So if you're operating in this industry, you will need to buy something from somebody else. And the companies or individuals selling things to you, these are called suppliers. So you can say that you will have suppliers in terms of your workforce, in terms of your funding, for example, the bank, in terms of your raw materials and also technology. So these are your suppliers. Firstly, you will need to count the supplies in the market. Okay, so for example, there are 10 suppliers offering a key component out of 50 suppliers. Of course, your suppliers, yes, you will need 20% of them, okay? Or, or, or perhaps uh, you are thinking about to pick up one from the 10 suppliers that you that existed in the marketplace. You also need to look at the supplier size distribution. So for example, similar to what we've seen from the buyer's point of view, there are 30 small suppliers out of 50, and therefore suppliers, approximately 60% of these suppliers are relatively small. So if they are small suppliers from the business point of view, I would say from a commercial point of view, 
very likely that we will owe money to the small supplier, so creating the payable state. However, from the ethical point of view and also practical point of view, we shouldn't owe too much money to them or too long. Otherwise, it will certainly impact on our reputation. Now, next one is the supplier transition difficulty. So, this means that if I were to find out an other supplier, of course, how difficult it is to my business, to the buyer in other words, so, when we look at the buyer's bargaining power before, we look at the buyer switching complexity. So, you can copy this KPI directly to the supplier. However, from the supplier transition difficulties point of view, yes, we look at it from the buyer's point of view in another way. So, for example, if I were to uh, transfer to a new supplier, I would need to wait for another two weeks. So suppose that per week it will cost me $10,000 because perhaps during this time I will need to outsource it to somebody else. I will need to pay a higher price regarding our raw materials, regarding our wages and so on. So if that's the case then, okay, so if I were to transfer to a new supplier, I will need to wait for another two weeks. So two weeks times by $10,000 per week. At the same time, I will also need to pay another $20,000, supposing that we need to pay another $20,000, okay, for any emergency costs. So we need to compare this with the industry average. Let's say, from the industry average point of view, they will need another three weeks to wait for. If they were to transfer to a new supplier, the explicit cost will be 25000 there. So if that's the case then, so I would say that the figure will be 73% is less than one, it's less than the industry average, okay, so which means it's not particularly difficult in this particular example uh, to switch to another supplier. Now, another KPI would be the supplier quality price ranking. Okay, so we are going to be seeing that which supplier uh, is uh, economy, okay, from the buyer's point of view. So we simply take the quantity score, divide this into the price score. Now, we've got the supplier A, their quality, that we rate them as 85 out of 100, and the price is $100 per unit. So that would be 0.85 for supplier A. Now, the 0.85, I would say, if this ratio is higher, I would say that quality is quite high and price is quite low, and therefore the supplier is more attractive. Okay, the higher the ratio, the more attractive that this supplier would be as a result. Now, the next area within the Porter's Five Forces, we will need to see the threat from potential entrant. We are talking about the new competitors, in other words. So for the new competitor, if they were to enter into the market, firstly, they would need to recognise whether or not the existing customers will remember their name or remember the competitors' names. So we can perform the brand recognition index. So what we can say is that, okay, uh, we used a survey and a maximum score of 100 and the, uh, we're going to be seeing that how many people can recognise our brand. So, for example, within that 100, 80 people recognise our brand and if that's the case then, the brand recognition index will be 80%. Okay, it's, yes, very good, I would say, more than 50 and also we need to see the customer retention rate from a new competitor's point of view. If we cannot retain our customers, uh, there's no point in operating in this market any longer. So for example, we've got 500 customers in total, but we lost 20. So we can retain 480. 480 divide this into the total 500, we can retain 96% of that. 
We can also see the patent protection ratio. So in other words, for example, we've got potential total 20 patents protecting our product. So currently, we have already applied 10. So if that's the case then, for the total of 20, because we've got 10 already, so perhaps there will be an additional of 10 patents that we are applying, uh, and uh, that accounts for 50%, okay? So uh, we can successfully obtain 50% of the total patents out of 20. So the patent protection ratio will be very key. Otherwise, uh, if the ratio is quite low in our business, the new competitor comes in and uh, will take our market share away. They can simply copy our processes and products and without being punished. So very, very important thing that we need to bear in mind. Now, the final element within the Porter's Five Forces is talking about this substitute threat. Because uh, our market share may be taken away by the substitutes directly. So what we can do is we take the substitute selling price, divide this into our selling price, and here will be 67%. Now, if this ratio is particularly high, so it means that the numerator will be high. So it means that the substitute selling price will be absolutely high there. So if that's the case, the higher the ratio, our product is more attractive and the substitute's product is not attractive. So always monitor that in terms of the ratio here. Now, another ratio is the substitute performance ratio. So what we can do, okay, let's take a look at the example from the automobile industry, which means the car industry. Okay, so uh, we are comparing two different models here in terms of the acceleration. So for example, we've got the Eco Drive and the Elite Electro. Okay, so the Elite Electro is the substitute. So uh, it will take five seconds, okay, so five seconds to accelerate from zero to 60 miles per hour. So however, our model takes another 1.5 seconds total at 6.5 seconds. So according to the scoring system, okay, in our business, as we can say, the maximum score would be 50. And uh, for the acceleration, as you can say, for every 0.5 second increase, okay, uh, there will be a benchmark uh, of 5 seconds, uh, but there will be a reduction of 10 point okay, if there will be 0.5 second uh, increase, so which means slower, so we will deduct 10 points from there. So if that's the case then, as we can say, we've got two models here, and our model will be 1.5 seconds lower, so uh, for every 0.5, okay, so three times lower, for each time we'll need to times by 10 points, that will be 30 points as a reduction here. So the total points will be 50 points. So this means that 50 minus 30, there will be 20 points leaving to our model. So if I were to use that 20 and to divide this into a total of 50 points compared to the substitute, and that will be 40%. So 40% of the substitute, and this means that we are not very attractive, okay, uh, from a substitute, which means from the elite electrodes models point of view. But near 100%, uh, that would be on average, uh, near to the performance of a substitute, uh, or exceeding 100%, of course, there would be, uh, very good, okay, better than the substitute. So we can monitor the substitute performance rating for that. Of course, for the scoring system, it really depends on which business it is that you are in, and there will be different criteria set by different entities as a result. 
Now, another model I would like you to recap on is the Boston Consulting Group matrix, which means the BCG matrix. Now, what BCG matrix actually means is that it would divide different product lines or companies, okay, based on the relative market share and the market growth. Now, we will then divide this box, okay, into four different categories. Now, the relative market share and the market growth can either be low market share or low market growth or high one, okay, uh, on the X and Y axis respectively. I will then divide the total box into four different categories here, okay. Uh, so, firstly, what do I mean by market growth? Market growth, we simply take the total revenue in the market and to minus the total revenue in the market last year and divide this into the total revenue in the market last year and to see whether or not the market is actually growing or not. Relative market share, on the other hand, we are taking a look at the market share of our company in comparison with the top industry player in the market. So, for example, our company's sales revenue will be $10 and the total sales revenue in the market will be 100 And that being the case, so our company's market share will be 10% there. Uh, now, we will need to compare this with the top industry player. So, for example, the top industry player in our market is market share, let's say, 30%. So if that's the case, then 10 divide this into 30, and that becomes 0 0.33. 0 0.33 is less than 0 0.5, sitting in the middle. So this means that somewhere it's relatively low market share, as we can see there. Now at the same time, yeah, we need to determine that market growth, and we can categorize different products or your companies into one of these boxes. Now, if the relative market share is particularly low and the market growth is particularly low, I would say that this is the thin dog. Okay. The thin dog, as we can see, that the revenue will be very, relatively small, so sales relatively small, but at the same time, the costs will be relatively small as well. So, if both are small and leaving the cash position to be neutral. We are not overspending money onto the dog category. However, if both the relative market share and market growth will be high, we'll see that this will be a star. Again, star, the sales will be relatively high. At the same time, costs will be relatively high. And as we can say, yes, we'll be in a cash neutral position because we are not overspending our money into that uh, but uh, spending lots of money will certainly give rise to a lot a lot more revenues that we can earn and our aim for that is to turn the start into a couch cow a couch cow as you can see we have got a relatively high market share but low market growth in this industry in the cash cow category, the sales will be particularly high, however, costs are not so high. And this means that there will be a cash generator for our business, but uh, in this category, no, ma no matter for our products or companies, we still have to advertise it. And finally, we've got the problem child, which means in this category, the market growth is huge, However, our relative market share is relatively small and we need a very careful strategy to turn the problem child or question mark into a star and finally to a couch cow. Now, these are the strategies, okay? So, for example, for dogs, yeah, we may need to think about uh, to making sure we keep the costs low, making sure resource allocations are appropriate, 
making sure to maximize the efficiency, making sure from a strategic point of view whether or not we still need to keep that particular product. Uh, perhaps sometimes we keep that product simply to attract traffic or customers into our business, but selling the customer with other items to make profit. So if this is not the case, we may need to consider the divestment consideration, which means we directly sell them off to somebody else. Problem child, we need to conduct very careful market research and making strategic investment in terms of setting up the return on investment target or the ROI target and to make sure that we can get the most out of every dollars that we spend and also performing the risk analysis for the problem child and to monitor that and quickly react to any particular problems that we may face okay when we're dealing with the question mark so very very important uh, cash cow on the other hand we are talking about we have to maintain that cash cow so maintaining that cash cow is simply be uh, we need to keep updating our product updating our uh, production facility, making sure we obtain the customer feedback and engaging with potential and the current customer uh, quite frequently. So, for example, advertising it still need to incur the advertising expenditure. Of course, thinking about the cost efficiency, making sure we've got enough fund and making sure we stay alert to any particular competition from the marketplace especially some of our customers may become our competitors in the end so cash cow yes we need to maintain that for stars yes very importantly making strategic investment making sure that marketing campaigns would work and supporting our high growth in revenue analyzing our competitors making sure innovation and to diversify our businesses perhaps okay making sure that we also attract different market uh, and uh, with our different products perhaps uh, if that falls into the stars category however uh, we will need to think about it from the performance management point of view so for example for docs as i said before we need to keep the costs low so cost control metrics will be very very important for example, focusing on minimizing the wastage and optimizing the operational expenses. So, for example, to downsize uh, our uh, structure, which means to remove the middle line manager, something like that. We may have different plans for the exit strategy. So, for example, uh, determining uh, the uh, detailed plan, how we phase out this product line, or if I were to sell it, which means divest it to somebody else, I would need to renegotiate the selling price uh, in the best interest of a company. And also transit our customer to another product line and to setting up the KPIs to relocate the resources in relation to that. Very important from a performance management point of view. For the question mark, as you can say, Yes, we may need budget in conducting the market research. We may need to set up the KPIs related to the return on investment. We will also need to think about the product development features in terms of the money that we spent in the R&D research and development, obtaining feedback and scores, uh, rating our products, uh, and, and also seeing the revenue, the, new, the, the revenue from a new product uh, increase or not so related to Apollo development. And also we need to focus on the growth initiatives this one. Okay, so uh, very, very important there. So for example, if the teams come up with strategies uh, to turn the products into star, we will need to reward them properly. So for example, giving them share options, bonuses and something like that. For cash cows on the other hand, okay, stable and to maintain the position will be very very important there so the KPI should be focusing on for example the quality where or not that could be maintained the service delivery standards where or not that can be standardized at the same time optimizing the costs will be an 
a, a very important step that we need to undertake. Uh, so, for example, if the team members can come up with new ways to optimize to improve, which means to decrease our costs to be more efficient, yes, there would be additional bonuses or uh, the commissions that we can pay to those team members. And having the customer loyalty programs will be very key. So, for example, for ACCA, so after you qualify as the member of ACCA, yes, you can apply for the practice certificate. Uh, you can also apply uh, to be elected in the uh, council, okay, uh, global council. Or you can also become the advocate for ACCA as well. Okay, so you see loyalty programs and so making sure that you are staying active with the ACCA or the company. And performing risk management procedures appropriately will be very key to identify the strategic and operational risks, which may turn the potential couch cows into a fin dock. So very, very important in that. Finally, uh, for stars, okay, for stars, yeah, you will need to set up the KPI for the growth metrics for the growth rate, for the revenue and profit, rewarding the innovation, retaining the customer, and managing your resources appropriately. Uh, so setting up the KPIs on these areas will certainly help. But, but the BCG matrix, of course, as you can say, sometimes it can be argued it's quite simple indeed. Uh, it's too simple to solve any practical problems. And it's more like a static model. So it means that if the category of your product has changed from a fin dock to a star, you will need to adopt the new metrics related to star and to reassess it continuously. At the same time, if we depend, uh, if we depend on the market share, uh, however, it doesn't necessarily mean that sometimes if you account for uh, much of the market share in the industries that you can make profit, okay, because uh, from a profit size point of view, accounting for most of the market share, it may mean that your fixed cost will be relatively high, particularly when you are in the cash cow category. So uh, although in the BCG matrix, the final aim will be to turning the categories into the cash cow However, in practice, sometimes the fin dog will generate most of the profit for the business. So this will be another limitation of the BCG matrix. So that's why we cannot use this matrix alone. Now, regarding another uh, model is the Porter's generic strategies. So from a business point of view, we may need to think about how we can compete with our competitors. So perhaps we would like to lower down our costs, so I will lower down our selling price to gain more market share. Perhaps I would like to differentiate our product or services from our competitors. Alternatively, I will focus on the key stuff. I will focus on cutting costs, I will focus on differentiating myself from others. Okay, now, these are the Porter's generic strategies. Now, if you think about Walmart, yes, you will say that it's adopting the cost leadership strategy, making the selling prices quite low because of the economies of scale. Same applies to Coca-Cola and Pepsi. However, for the Four Seasons Hotel and the Apple, they are using differentiation strategy. And also even Tesla, they are using differentiation strategy. And if you are focusing on the cost element, for example, a good example would be the Primark. It's a leading retailer based in the UK, uh, so everything will be quite cheap and focusing on uh, the people that likes the cheap things. So, of, of course, I, I, I like the products from the Primark as well. And if you're focusing on uh, the differentiation, for example, particularly focusing on uh, the group or niche, I would say the focus would be called niche, uh, a targeted, a small group of customers yeah, you're focusing on, you're targeting, so a good example would be ACCA. So instead of targeting, uh, the, many of these accountants studying this qualification, but we are only targeting 
vows who are uh, wishing to obtain the practice certificate and audit qualification and even uh, having the master level okay, of your studies uh, to study this qualification. So it's more like a differentiation focus here. Now, different company would use different strategy. And this is why, from my perspective though, yes, related to cost leadership, you will need to look at the KPIs related to efficiency. Related to differentiation, you will need to keep an eye on to KPI regarding the brand and quality. Related to niche, yes, you will need to make sure that your customers are loyal. Okay, so making sure that you account for most of the market share in your particular niche. And this is why I would like to set the KPIs in much more detail. Now, if you're adopting the cost leadership strategy here, you can focus on the unit cost reduction, comparing your new cost with the old cost. You can see the process efficiency, comparing the time that you need to process the item with the time that you need to process the old item. You can also think about the inventory turnover, which means how quickly that you can sell off your items of inventories. You can also think about the supply chain efficiency, so which means you take the total revenue and to see how much total supply chain costs will account for the total revenue. I would say is, is, is that if this ratio is particularly low, uh, you can support the revenue with low supply chain costs regarding the supply chain related to the upstream suppliers if you're not happy with their products or if their product quality are bad yeah you will incur costs to fixing them related to your downstream supply chain which means you're dealing with the customers the customers are not happy and you have to take care of them so these are all of your total supply chain costs to, to, to reduce them, to minimize them, it will certainly maximize your efficiency. And also you can look at how much the overhead costs account for the total revenue and to see that percentage. Uh, and if this cost is particularly low, and of course I would say that the cost leadership strategy would be successful in the end. Now, Another strategy is the differentiation strategy, which means you're offering the unique product, you're offering the unique products or services. The first KPI would be the net promoter score. Let me take you through an example here. For example, you are performing a survey and from a scale from zero to, uh, zero to 10, and you find out, okay, you've surveyed a thousand respondent and 650 will be promoting your product okay we'll be thinking about okay they are they are rating your products as 9 or 10 however there will be 150 will be the detractors detractors who are not going to promote your product at all so what will be the net number of them the net number will be 650 minus 150 I would say that 50, 500 out of 1,000, which means about 50% of the people will be willing to promote your product or services in the end. So this is what I mean by the net promoter score and to see the reputation of your product or services or, 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 or your business. The next KPI will be the brand recognition. So for example, I survey 100 people, 10 can recognize my brand. So this, this index will be too low. I can also uh, set the KPI based on the return rate. For example, I've sold a thousand items, but a hundred returned. So because of they are defective, perhaps. The final one is the quality defect rate. So for example, I've checked 2000 items. However, a thousand of them are defective. So if that's the case, then it, it, it will be very hard for such businesses to differentiate themselves among others. Now, if our strategy is targeting on the niche market only, 
So only on a cost focus, yes, I can, account, I, I can calculate the KPIs based on my market share in that niche. I can also see, for example, I spent $1,000 in the marketing and advertising costs, and I gained 100 customers. So if that's the case then, $10 per customer will be the cost per acquisition in a niche segment. I will need to think about ways to reduce that cost to be more efficient. At the same time, we've got 100 customers. However, the repeat niche customer making repeated purchases in our business will only be 10 of them. So if that's the case then, the customer retention rate will be very low uh, and maybe it seems that our cost or would be very high, which means our selling price is not attractive to them any longer. And we'll need to monitor also for the price competitiveness as well. So for example, we'll see our selling price, let's, let's say we've got $10 in the numerator, and for the competitor selling price would just to be $2 there. It's five times more than our competitor selling price, and it makes our product not competitive in terms of selling prices at all. Now, the final one is the differentiation focus. So again, we are targeting the niche market, but to differentiate ourselves in terms of product features, in terms of services, in terms of processes that we make the product. So for example, I can see the market growth rate and to see whether or not we grow our business into this niche market. I will also obtain the customer feedback and reviews. For example, I conducted 100 reviews and the total scores on average will be 1,000 scores. And this means that the rating will be 10 score, uh, which will, uh, 10 scores will be very good for the business, okay? So we take the total score of all reviews and divide into the total number of reviews. We will also monitor the response time to niche market demand as well. Okay, so uh, in other words, for example, the time to adapt or to introduce the new offerings, okay, based on the feedback, so we can introduce new products. And also we can monitor the date of implementation as well. So for example, uh, we receive the feedback, okay, and uh, from uh, uh, a month ago, and then we respond to it with the new product or to solve this issue within one month, which means 30 days, uh, which means 30 days for implementation will be quite quick for most businesses. Now, these KPIs will surely make sure that your strategy can be put into practice and make sure that you're ready for that. Now, we covered quite a lot of things here, as we can see, starting from the PETS analysis, Okay, and then the BCG matrix, the Porter's generic and Porter's five forces model. And of course, later on we'll summarize them into a SWOT analysis, which means what will be the strength and weakness, opportunities and threat. So most likely the opportunities will be based on the pest analysis, and the threat will be based on the Porter's five forces model. And the SWOT uh, and the S&W, yes, we'll see the Porter's value chain later on. I will see the balance scorecard later on in our studies. Okay, uh, so that comes to an end for section three of our study. Hope you're happy, and I look forward to seeing you in the next of our section then. Bye-bye. APC, accounting for your future.